Democrats gearing up for a battle over some Trump cabinet picks. Is this the very best that America has to offer? Hopefully, we'll see the Senate Republicans do their job, scrutinize these picks. Yeah. The Republican senator who votes to confirm Matt Gates or Robert Kennedy or Tulsi Gabbard yeah. um, will be remembered by history as somebody who completely gave up their uh, yeah. responsibility to, uh, to Donald Trump. Historian uh, Congressman Jim Himes, yes. Here to react is Trump 2024 senior official and Trump 2016 campaign manager Corey Lewandowski. Corey, let's just focus on the three they mentioned, uh, Tulsi Gabbard, RFK Jr., and Matt Gates. Out of the three, who's going to be hardest to confirm? Look, my guess, Brian, is that uh, former Congressman Gates is probably the most difficult. We've seen the most backlash from him. And the reason is the Democrats are anxious to get a release of a report, which the House Ethics Committee was allegedly is about to release, uh, that has been put on hold. That said, Brian, no one knows what's in that report. And more importantly, what these Democrats refuse to admit is that Donald Trump is coming back to Washington, D.C. with a mandate from the American people and is entitled to have his cabinet around him that he chooses. Now, listen, the U.S. Senate has the right to confirm these people, but I want to remind everybody that Donald Trump's mandate also allowed him to make the U.S. Senate a Republican majority with his winning in Pennsylvania, his winning in Ohio, bringing those candidates across the line also in Montana. So as these U.S. senators consider the president's yeah. nominees, they should remember why they're in the majority. All right, uh, absolutely, too. Hey, look, it's a nomination process. RFK's got to have answers. Matt Gates has got to have answers. And, and let's, uh, let's make it pay-per-view because it's going to be electric. Uh, let's talk about Treasury Secretary. A little bit surprising here. You know, not the sexiest position, but a vital one. But Howard Lutnick says, I have a good idea. Why don't I just name myself? I recommend me by the power vested in me uh, because he is a part of the transition team in the selection process. And it looked to be Scott Bessett's deal. Now it looks like there's more people entered into it. Key Square, uh, there's Kevin Marsh, Warsh, uh, the former uh, Fed Reserve Governor, and then Mark Rowan, the CEO of Apollo Global. What's your sense on what's going on here? You know, Brian, it reminds me a little bit when I was the chairman of the Vice Presidential Selection Committee in 2016, and I went out and I interviewed all the candidates, and I should have maybe just come back to then candidate Trump and said, Corey Lewandowski would be the best vice president. Uh, but we picked, obviously, at the time, Mike Pence. Uh, that said, it's very difficult when you're in the position of making recommendations to also be positioning yourself for a position there. You're, maybe you want to have someone who's agnostic to it. Listen, I like Howard Lutnick. I like all the players in this. At the end of the day, it's going to be the president's decision. But sometimes it's very difficult to be in the position of recommending someone when you're trying for that same very position. Yes, it's a little different, like Dick Cheney. He went through the whole process. He goes, I have an idea. Let's make it Dick Cheney. Uh, so, and he ends up That's being right. Donald Trump's running mate. Uh, excuse me, George Bush is running mate. Corey, it's an exciting time. I think the country's really uh, rallying around the president-elect, if you watch football and if you watch the UFC. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.